In this video, I will review single variable differential calculus in 10 minutes. With x denoting the variable, fx or gx denoting a function of x, and a or b denoting a constant, the derivative rules are as follows. Constant rule, dA over dx equals 0, where a is a constant. Constant multiple rule, the first derivative of af is a times the first derivative of f. Simply put, the first derivative of af equals af prime. The sum difference rule. The first derivative of the linear combination of n, f and g. In here, af plus minus bg is equal to a times the first derivative of f plus minus b times the first derivative of g. Product rule. We're taking the first derivative of a product of f and g. The result is the first derivative of f times g plus f times the first derivative of g. Or simply put, f prime g plus f g prime. Power rule. The first derivative of x to the power of a is a times x to the power of a minus 1. For example, the first derivative of x to the power of negative 1 is negative 1 times x to the power of negative 2. Quotient rule. The first derivative of f over g can be treated as a product of f and the reciprocal of g. And then we can use the product rule. The result is the first derivative of f times the reciprocal of g plus f times the first derivative of the reciprocal of g. In short, this is f prime g minus f g prime divided by g squared. Chain rule. When f is a function of g and g is a function of x, then df over dx is simply df over dg times dg over dx. This g is viewed as an intermediate variable and this dg and this dg cancel. Reciprocal rule. df over dx times dx over df equals 1. Similarly, df over dg times dg over df equals 1. Now a few more examples. Exponential functions. The first derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. This can be easily proven using the Taylor or Maclaurin expansion of e to the power of x. And then we're going to look at the first derivative of e to the power of ax. Now we have to treat this ax as a whole. If we set y equals ax, then we're looking at the first derivative of e to the power of y with respect to y and then dy over dx. Therefore, we get a times e to the power of y, and e to the power of y is e to the power of ax. How about this e to the power of a function f? Again, the chain rule. We take the first derivative of e to the power of f with respect to f. You get e to the power of f. And then multiply by df over dx. The first derivative of a to the power of x is a little tricky. We need to rewrite this a as e to the power of ln a. And then we can combine this x and ln a. Therefore, we are simply taking the first derivative of e to the power of ln a times x. The result is ln a times e to the power of x. Logarithms. We start from this exponential function, and then we replace e to the power of x with y and x with ln y by setting y to e to the power of x. And then we have the reciprocal of the derivative of ln y. And therefore, we know d ln y over d y is 1 over y, and similarly, d ln x over dx is 1 over x. What about the natural logarithm of a function? We we'll have to use the chain rule. This equals d ln f over df times df over dx. Therefore, the result is 1 over f times df over dx. 
Now we're gonna take the logarithm of x with a different base a. How do we do this? Again, a bit more algebra involved in here. Log x, x with a base a is simply ln x divided by ln a. Therefore, the result is simply 1 over ln a times x. Gaussian functions, e to the power of negative ax squared. Again, this time we imagine setting y equals negative ax squared. Therefore, we can easily use the chain rule. We have d e to the power of y over dy times dy over dx. Again, this is dy, this is dy, they cancel. The result is simple. It's e to the power of y times negative 2ax. And e to the power of y should be written as e to the power of negative ax squared. Because again, y, the intermediate variable, is said to be negative ax squared. Now, trig functions. The first derivative of sine function is cosine function. The first derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. Again, if you know how to do Taylor or Maclaurin expansion of sine x and cosine x, this two can be easily proven. Tangent x is sine x over cosine x. So you may use the quotient rule before. If you have the uh, first derivative of f over g, you may treat this as the product of g times f times g to the power of negative 1, and in the end, you have f prime g minus f g prime over g squared. So really, in the end, we have this uh, cosine x squared on the bottom. Okay, so this guy squared on the bottom. And then we take the first derivative of sine function, that's cosine function, times cosine function, we have cosine function here, minus sine x times the first derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x, and on top we have cosine x squared plus sine x squared, that's 1. Now sine ax, if we use the chain rule again by setting y equals ax, and then we have just simply the first derivative of sine y, times dy over dx, which is a times cosine ax. Finally, a very complicated first derivative. I'm taking the first derivative of the cosine function of a f function to the power of n. How do we tackle this problem? Again, chain rule. We will use this chain rule twice. First, we set y equals f to the power of n. So y is complicated by itself. Again, y is f to the power of n. Therefore, we are dealing with d cosine of y over dy. That's easy. That's just negative sine y. And then we have to do dy over df and then df over dx. So how about dy over df? dy over df is simply d f to the power of n over df. That's n times f to the power of n minus 1, and the final df over dx. Therefore, the result is negative sine f to the power of n times n times f to the power of n minus 1 times df over dx. Again, we use the chain rule a couple